For all you data professionals out there that are looking to make your break into the marketing data sector, you want to make sure that you're hip to channel scoring because it is one of the most powerful underutilized marketing data practices around. In today's video, I'm going to tell you what channel scoring is, how it's helpful, and how to get it done in five simple steps. For the very best data leadership and business building advice, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when a new episode drops each week. Who am I to tell you anything about channel scoring anyway? Well, we've been using it in my business, Data Mania, since 2017. That and actually this entire week I was working on writing channel scoring and omnichannel analytics into the update of Data Science for Dummies, which is a book I wrote originally in 2014 and I'm doing the third update now in 2021. I'm Lillian Pearson and I support data professionals to becoming world-class data leaders and entrepreneurs. Now, a few things before we get started. Channel scoring, of course, assumes that you have more than one marketing channel, what we call omni-channel, and it also assumes, this video is assuming that you know what a channel is. So if you haven't had a chance to get up to speed on omni-channel analytics and things like that, I recommend going back to my last video. This is actually the second video in a sequel on omni-channel analytics and channel scoring. So you may want to go back and check that video. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. We're going to start off today just by discussing what is channel scoring. After that, I'll give you the five steps on how to do it, and I'll even show you my channel scorecard from March of 2021 and discuss with you why I scored out the channels the way that I did. In its simplest form, channel scoring is just taking your company's sales and marketing data and looking at where the sales are being generated from. In other words, what channels customers are finding your products and services and making purchases through, and then looking at how each of those channels is performing relative to one another. And when we're talking about channel scoring and omnichannel analytics, we're always talking about leads and sales for your business. So we're not talking about anything related to vanity metrics or having a popular social media account, but we're talking about how are your marketing and sales efforts or the campaigns your companies have invested in, how are they performing with respect to leads and sales? So that's your ROI. And with channel scoring, you would create a channel scorecard, which then visually shows your findings, um, one channel against another for a bird's eye view. Channel scoring helps you improve your sales and marketing strategy, thus improving the ROI your company gets on its sales and marketing efforts. And it really, really can save you a lot of time and energy in identifying the underperforming channels, figuring out what's working, what's not working, so you can make improvements to those while still garnering great results from the channels that are working. So here on my channel, we are all data professionals, but we're not all marketing data professionals. So you you may have experience in scoring all types of you could be scoring retail outlets or distribution chains logistics scoring there's so many different types of scoring out there so i would love to hear from you in the comments below if you would like to share what type of data intensive scoring methods do you currently have experience with you could make channel scoring as complicated as you want there's all different ways of doing it but to keep things concise and simple in my business and also for you on my youtube channel i have broken it down into five simple steps the very first step for channel scoring is just to go ahead and map out your channels. And when I say map your channels, I mean you really want to itemize each of your different channels that are leading to sales for your business. What we're really talking about when we say channel here is we're talking about our sales and marketing channels. So I discussed this in the earlier video on omni-channel analytics, but the marketing channels, your marketing channels are basically the channels by which people become aware of your products and services, and then you warm them up to later result in a sale. Now, your sales channels are where the sale is actually made as well as the point of distribution um, of your product or your service. The second step in channel scoring is to go ahead and score those channels. So what I'm talking about is evaluating those channels against one another based on the number of sales and leads that are generated from the marketing channels. Important metrics you can use to help you score your channels out our customer lifetime value. For that, you can use the traditional approach where you use averages, or you can get sophisticated and bring in machine learning to do predictive customer lifetime value um, estimates. But that is a powerful metric for helping you score out each of your channels. Other more straightforward metrics would be customer reviews, satisfaction ratings, upsell, downsell, and renewal rates on a channel by channel basis, ticket volumes, and then of course, profitability per customer. So customer profitability broken down by on a channel by channel basis. So what you're really trying to do here is build a profile of your channels, your marketing channels, based on the customers that are coming through them. The metrics I just discussed help you quantify the quality of the customers that are coming through each of your various marketing channels. Heck, even if you were to go and score out each channel against one 
one another, just looking at these metrics in and of themselves can be incredibly valuable in terms of improving your marketing strategy. That's just because when you start looking into these metrics and taking a deeper dive into why things are happening the way they do, you will uncover all kinds of opportunities that you can use to basically supercharge what you've got going on in your business today, what's working, you can make it even more powerful. And then you can also identify what's not working and try to figure out, okay, what can we do to improve that? And then make changes to your marketing strategy based on your findings. Channel scoring, it just takes things a few steps forward. Now, the third step for channel scoring is just to create a channel scorecard. Now, I discussed this a few moments ago, but a scorecard is really just a visual representation of your analytical findings that you can look at and use as a quick takeaway. It's really a communication tool and a summarization tool. On the screen here, now you see my channel scorecard from March 2021. We're gonna look at that in greater detail in just a second. Now, like I said, this video is really a sequel to my prior video on Omnichannel Analytics. And so if you haven't had a chance to check that out and you would like to, I'll leave a link to it in the description below as well as put it in the cards on this video. Bringing us to step four of channel scoring, which is just to define a customer avatar for each of your separate marketing channels. Now for this, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to get some behavioral analytics that describe people's preference and behavior on each of your marketing channels. So that generally will involve going into the actual marketing channel and using their built-in analytics. That is, of course, unless you have a sophisticated marketing analytics reporting tool like Keyhole. But for all intents and purposes, you could generally get away with using the in-platform analytics provided on most of the social media channels or through Google Analytics. This information will start giving you an idea of people's preferences and what they're really looking for you and your company along each of these different marketing channels. Spoiler alert, it generally isn't the same thing on each of your different marketing channels, which is why you have to go into your channel analytics and see what is preferred performing well, what people are loving on each of your channels, and then figure out your strategy from there. Another important part of developing a customer avatar along each of your marketing channels is you have to think about the customers you've already acquired through that channel and what are their personal attributes. Go ahead and make some educated guesses about the types of customers or the types of potential customers that are coming through those channels based on the customers you've already acquired. And lastly, for step five on how to do channel scoring, just make sure to take these analytics and findings you've generated and tweak your marketing and sales strategy based on what you found. You would just go ahead and look at the customer avatar along with your scorecard and make changes to your marketing strategy that you estimate will result in an improvement in performance in terms of sales and leads generated from each of your marketing channels. This is so you can better support your company's sales strategy and overall marketing goals. And just like I promised, we're going to go over my channel scorecard for this month. What you see on here is, of course, just a really simple example of something you could create that would work as a channel scorecard. And unfortunately, there is just no cut and dry formula I can give you for scoring your company's channel. You really have to get in there and look at the numbers, look at the factors, and come up with a way to weight each of the variables or features, criteria that you're using for scoring in a way that it's assigning proper weight to sales and leads along each of the marketing channels. And I know that sounds kind of vague, but there's just a lot you need to get into in terms of looking at the actual numbers and scaling your variables. And so I will leave that to you, but you should be able to come up with a formula where you can utilize the metrics I just gave you in order to score each of your marketing channels against one another and come up with a snapshot picture on which channels are rocking it and which channels not so much. Looking back at my channel score, card for March 2021, I just wanted to give you a few reasons why I scored the channels out the way that I did. So for this month, we're just looking at four main channels, which are LinkedIn, Search, Instagram, and email. Under content preferences, you can see a little snippet about topics and format of content that people along each of those marketing channels is seeming to really prefer. So I went ahead and I looked at analytics inside each of the channels separately to identify what seems to be working really well in that channel and then what people don't seem to want to see on that channel in particular. So for example, LinkedIn long form videos are not doing great. Same with Instagram. Long form videos are not doing 
great. Is that because of the customers and potential customers on that channel? Or is that because of the algorithm? It doesn't really matter. You don't want to do things that don't perform well. And yes, some people do have incredibly high performing videos on LinkedIn, but I also believe that sometimes some of these are picked up by moderators and manually promoted throughout the platform. So anyway, it doesn't matter what other people are doing. If it's not working for my channel and my business, then we need to stop doing it, right? We need to cut out the long form videos in LinkedIn and Instagram. That was one of the core takeaways from this month's channel scoring. And then also I really narrowed in on what seems to be working great on each of the channels. So like on search, so on my website, everyone loves, loves, loves coding demonstrations. Whereas on Instagram, people really like personal stories and they like to see pictures in real life of my family and it's kind of more of a personal get to know you type of vibe. So the whole point of this is when you do channel scoring, you can get a really good view on what people are looking for from your company on a channel by channel basis and really help increase that personalization, help you create relevancy and intimacy that will then make it easier for your company to make the sales. Now, in terms of the actual scores I gave to each of these channels, like I said, the scores should actually be firmly rooted in the number of leads and sales each of your channels is generating for your business. And so simply because my LinkedIn channel did not result in a lot of leads and sales for the business relative to the other channels, I gave it a C, which stands for good. Now, search, Instagram, and email all performed up to satisfaction, you know, the best I could expect for them, so they all got A's. That's a really, really important point because it's a difference between growing something like a personal brand and something like a business. A business, your metrics and your scores and all of your marketing efforts need to be tied to leads and sales for your business, whereas if you were doing something on a personal brand basis, it's easy to not worry so much about how it's actually converting to leads and sales. I just want to really quickly cover how channel scoring is helpful to your company in terms of increasing sales and marketing ROI, because that's really why we are all here. It doesn't matter if you're an entrepreneur or you're a marketing data professional in a company, we've got to be focused on how we improve the business's bottom line. So there are a lot of ways that channel scoring can help you improve your company's bottom line, but I'll just go over three of them now. One is customer acquisition. By doing channel scoring by heating what the data is telling you along each of your marketing channels and how those channels are performing with respect to sales and leads, that will really, really help you, like I said, increase your level of personalization and also double down on the correct kind of context and really narrow in on what people are looking for from you and your company along each of the marketing channels. That is going to improve brand trust and make it easier for your company to make sales from within those channels. So it's lowering the cost of customer acquisition, which is definitely a good thing. The next way channel scoring is helpful is customer retention. So imagine someone buys something from your company and then they basically never see you again. In this type of situation, it becomes less likely that the person would actually come back and make a repeat purchase. But if you are showing up on a daily basis along their preferred channels and really working to stay on pulse with what their needs, expectations, and desires are from your company as a solution provider, there is a lot higher chance that you're going to stay top of mind. And so long as you're offering incredible products and services, they're not going to forget about you and they are going to come back for repeat purchases. That, of course, results in improved customer retention rates, lower customer churn, all good things for the business. Lastly, when you dig deep into your channel scoring and looking at all your different channel analytics and your sales analytics, you really get to know your customer a lot, lot better, and you can use that data to inform your product development strategies. So whether that's improving the products you already have or developing new products based on what you know from the analytics you've gathered on your clients, either of those are going to be great for your company and a win-win for all. Now, if you like this video on how to take marketing data and use it for producing a better informed strategy to increase the return on investment for your company, then you are probably going to love my data strategy action plan. This is a step-by-step -step checklist and collaborative Trello board planner for data professionals who want to get unstuck and up-leveled into their next promotion by delivering a fail-proof data strategy for their next data project. I'll link to it in the description below. And also, you would probably really love it inside of our data leader and entrepreneur community over on Facebook. It is chocked full of some of the most up-and-coming data leaders and entrepreneurs on the entire internet who've all come together to inspire and uplift one another. So that Facebook group is free. If you'd like to join it, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And if you like this video, be sure to show it some love by giving it a thumbs up. Leave a comment in the description below letting me know what you think of channel scoring, when you think you'll start your next project, and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you'll be the first to know when the next episode drops.